Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about how to create a simple API with Python Flask. So for our API creation project, we are going to use technologies like Python Flask, Visual Studio Code, Flask RESTful Library, Pony ORM, SQLite Database, and Postman NAS API Server. So let's get into our code. First, you should create a folder for your project. Then we should create a virtual environment inside our project folder. Now we should create our first Python file, main.py file. Then we should open our project in Visual Studio Code. First of all, we should open our terminal. It is better to use command line so we can choose command prompt. And delete PowerShell here. If you are not seeing this ENV, you should activate your virtual environment scripts like this ENV backslash scripts. Activate since I'm, I have virtual environment activated, I don't need to activate it. Okay, first we need to install our libraries. So let's Install them with pip install. First, we need to install Flask library. So, you are installing these packages inside your virtual environment, not on your computer directly. Also, we should install Flask RESTful. Finally, we need to install Pony ORM. So, as you can see, Pony is a Python object relational mapper. Go to the website on ponyorm.org and learn more about it. So we have installed all necessary packages. Now let's start our program. So first of all, we need to import our libraries. We need to import Flask from Flask and request. Then we need to import resource and API from Flask RESTful. Then we need to import ORM from Pony. We need to create that here. Then we can create the API. Then we can create the database. Let's create our database down here. We can create a student table inside our database. We can create a student ID and which is a required field, which is a string, and it is a unique field. Then we can create the other field student name, which is also required and a string. Okay, that's enough for our table. Here we are binding our database which is SQLite and we are giving our database file a name database.sqlite and it will create our database so when this python script runs this line will create our database as you can see here there is no database here once we run the file it will create a database file here this line makes mapping for our table now down here we can create our code for the API. Then down here we are going to create two classes. You can refer Flask RESTful documentation for more details. Here we are using this method, creating class to do our get and post methods. So here we are creating a class, giving the name strong list and using our resource object. Then we need to create our function. If we can do a get function here. For now, let's leave it like this. You can also use a post function. Let's create another class. So in this student list class, we can get all the students. Also, we can insert new students using post method. So we are creating another class to get 
specific strong details to retrieve strongest details. Here we are declaring our routes for strong list class. We are using the route location for strong details class. We can use route location with an student ID since we are declaring our student ID as a string. We are using a string colon student ID. So at the end we need to create our app and make debug equals true and assign a port number. So now our minimal app is completed. How it is working in this function but we can run it. When we are running it will run this line and create our database. Finally you can run your python file like this. You can control and click this link and go to the URL. As you can see, it is showing all because there's nothing. We haven't programmed our functions. Also, you can see now there's our database. We cannot read it inside our IDE, but if you use SQLite browser, you can read the database. So this is DB browser for SQLite. You can install it. You need to go to file and open your database. You should select it from your files. Now you can see your external details database. You need to click this browse data and you can see your table is created without any data. First let's insert some data so we can use our post method. We can create it like a new student and which is equal to request.json so we are passing json data then we can connect to our database here we need to create the instance of our table first we need to tell that we are going to give student id then student name like this we can give our student name and student id and assign it to our database once we insert a new record we can retrieve that specific details and we can assign a name like this is the new student so to avoid crashes we can use this code within a try block let's indent this and use accept here we can say that if someone is going to insert same data again we can say that that specific student id is already there all right uh, so let's run this To insert some data we need to use postman so you better install postman okay you can go to postman.com and you can download your version here windows or apple or linux version once you download and install it you will see an interface like this so here we need to create a collection we can give it our name API demo then inside it we need to add a request so our request is a post request we can give it a name post request then we need to enter our URL which is from this URL. You can copy it here, paste URL, then you need to choose body here, then row. There you need to choose JSON data. Here you should be running your application like this, and now we can insert some JSON data in our table. There's an ID. Also, we are giving an student ID and a student name. 
first STO ID then store name STO ID is one and press this send button if it is successful you can see it like this new student is join with student ID one all right we can insert another data we can modify this store number two Jessica and we can press send button and it has inserted Jessica here let's insert some more data like 3 and 4 so I have inserted four records we can go to our database here when we press this refresh button we can see our inserted data as you can see John Jessica Duane and Miro so now let's write our get method as you can see here four for request are okay with the code 200 here in our get method we are going to retrieve all our data so first we need to connect our database here we are getting all the students we are selecting all the students from our student table then we assign those data to a variable and retrieve it as JSON data finally we can retrieve our results inside our result variable okay let's save it and run it here you can control click this URL since we are in the road directory you can see all our student data as we write our program next we need to get specific student data from our database using this student detail class so first we need to connect our database then here we are creating a variable called the student and we are providing our student ID and get that specific students details here we can get our request student details as JSON data to pass our student ID we need to add stu ID okay let's run it you can use your browser here now we are receiving all this student data in our root URL but if we specifically use it like strong one and press enter you will receive strong one's detail here okay if you use number three here you will receive store number three's details like that but what if you enter a student ID that is not in our database right it will output an error like this so we need to write our code in a try block we can use a try here then we can indent our code except we can return an error message requested student is not in the database and let's save and try it out so here if we use student number four we have strong data if we use like student number seven we can receive our error message that requested student is not in the database all right that's it for today Thank you for watching.